Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming. Hey, girl. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks for fucking coming. coming. Boo, bitch. Well, hello, and thanks for coming, America, and everyone else. My name is Seth. <laughs> What's yours? <laughs> Hi, Jamal is here. Hi, it's Stony. Hey, everybody. Welcome back, back, back again to another fun week over here. Thanks for coming. We're, of course, the most magically gay podcast there ever was. And we are back, back, back again to bring you full coverage of everything that happened this week in drag, drag, drag. It's so fun watching all these shows now. There's like um, so much to look forward to throughout the week. I've been in kind of like a TV slump. I've having weeks where I only listen to music, where I only listen to podcasts, not really sure what to watch. So it's nice to have all these drag options. Yes, it's very fun to have these drag shows on, especially Dragula, since it's spooky season. Ooh, yes. It's the perfect time. Boo, bitch. Yes, girl. Um, well, let's see. I guess we have a couple <laughs> stories to discuss with you. Um, firstly, I just wanted to just give a shout out to our UK gal pal, Theresa May, because she dropped the, uh, the winter's hottest new track called My <laughs> Pussy is Like a Peach. Oh my gosh. That song is just going to haunt my dreams for at least a couple of weeks. It's amazing. It's like topping, blame it on the edit. It's amazing. Well, you know, it's going to go <laughs> off at the Halloween parties already. Like the Queens are going to eat this up. <laughs> this is already, it's already better than like <laughs> at least a third of RuPaul's like song history. <laughs> right. And shout out to all the um, peachy bottoms out there. Or if you're a peachy top, Ooh. peachy person. It's shout out to peachy people. Why Rue would want to eliminate like a top recording artist. But right. Because it, she's jealous. <laughs> That's why. Right. She's like, how like dare you like release a single like when my single is out. So I'm going to eliminate you. <laughs> yeah. Have fun blaming it on the edit, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes shade explosion i think on that yes girl i think um didn't stoney you said you had some news to share with us today yeah i guess like not really news just like <laughs> programming bullets or something i don't know <laughs> but uh, give it to us gal so rupaul announced that we are doing a christmas special this year so instead of I think like a couple years ago we had an actual like Christmas special, like it was like RuPaul's Drag Race, but this one is actually like a Christmas movie called The Bitch Who Stole Christmas. Oh, so Um, when no one wins, we won't be mad. Yeah, so expect a lot (laughs) of green. Expect a lot of green screen. A lot of terrible acting. New RuPaul Um, songs. We saw Jan on the cast list. Yeah. So, rumor is Jan is playing a big role in this. So, I'm hoping that she's going to give us all of her musical theater talent. <laughs> um, Kylie Son- Sonique Love is in it. Um, a bunch of queens. I don't even... There was like 20 queens. I don't know all their names. I don't remember all their names. But mm-hmm. Neither does RuPaul. Bitch. It's fine. It is a star-studded cast. So, I'm really hoping for the best here. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it should it could be, good. be cute. I think it could be cute. Um, so that's going to be fun. Drag Race Italia starts in November. So yeah. that's Woo-hoo. going to be on our list of things to cover. Yes. Um, and then another show called Queens of the Universe. Oh, is <laughs> which has a panel of, which I'm actually really excited about this. So, um, Trixie Mattel is the drag queen and judge. she's, yeah, she's the judge. Yeah. Um, Leona Lewis, who yeah. I love mm-hmm. a great UK. Uh, I think she was like on one of those like talent competitions in the UK and won that season or something. Yeah. She, I, her song for avatar is like, I love that song. Yeah. She I makes see, me, I think it's called. she wants, she makes me want to keep bleeding love. <laughs> yes that song is great uh um, yeah 
and um, Graham Norton is the host, so he's kind of like your MC of the the, the show. So um, obviously, it's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Vanessa Williams is there to give us like Independence Day vibes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's going to bring us all the colors of the wind, girl. <laughs> And then Michelle's there to ruin everything and make the show awful. Yeah, oh just to be a bitch to everybody. <laughs> oh, well, I love it. Great formula. This could be interesting, especially with a glass of champagne or a hit of the vape. I don't think the cast has been announced, but rumors are that Davina DeCampo is one of the queens of the universe. Oh. And oh. I'm here I don't for... think that's true. A red wig and a silver dress. Wait. <laughs> Wait, it's really not true? I don't think it is because I, I saw like the rumored cast and there were like no, there were, all the queens were not from like Drag Race franchises. There really? was like none of the, none of the girls from the other shows. It was just like all new drag queens plus um, Ada Vox who had like a pretty big hit um, a year or two ago. Okay. It must have been fed some spooky tea or something maybe i don't know we'll see (laughs) you could be right i don't know yeah it may have been because the problem is there's like 20 versions of drag race filming right now so i don't remember davina is supposed to be on something at some point i would love to see her on something at some point i'm sure it's coming i mean (laughs) i could i could so see it for davina you know yes girl what about that show um ravens painted by raven are we gonna cover that show that's coming out, but oh. I'm, I'm waiting to like watch it before, <laughs> like, because I don't know if I want to cover um, anything coming from Black her fishing. Show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I just like I see your tweets out there, y'all. Like, I see them, especially for the white gays out there. I'm talking specifically to you. Uh, we can be booked. We can be booked and blessed, any of us in any industry in any field, but. We have to agree that we can't co-sign being insensitive and ignorant when it comes to other queens, part of your community or not. Like maybe they're straights who are offended to this as well. Um, We can't just look this over because your fave is, you know, found some success. It's awesome. She has a show. If you're a true listener of our show, you would know that our favorite queens have fucked up and we have our relationship journeys with them. We'd love to continue our journey with Raven we're just really curious as to why, you know, the actions are being taken and things are not being said. So feel how you want to feel, but don't co-sign ignorance and insensitivity. It's not a good look. And if you don't agree, you know, we can agree to disagree. And thank you for listening. Yes, girl. Very, uh, very, very that. I co-signed Jamal's statement. Also, is anybody else here playing RuPaul's Drag Race app game? No, bitch. But tell me because I <laughs> might download it after this podcast. I want to try it. I just haven't gotten to it. Well, I, currently, I, I have, I'm working on getting all my stations to make enough work so that I can get prizes. Is it like free to play? Like where it's like scamming you? Like it's yeah. free to pl- free to play, but it's really just like mining your like debit card. Yeah, I think <laughs> I've reached the part of the game where you have to start spending money to actually enjoy playing the game. <laughs> Oh, I see. It's like an add-on kind of situation. Oh yeah, so you okay. can buy like the the queens and like merch or like their outfits and stuff like that. Okay. They're like, you don't want to go down the runway like La La Ri. You <laughs> right. Down the runway like Aquaria. Or oh something. Yeah. no. Um, and honestly, love... there's. Oh. Go ahead. I was just to say, there's not a lot of instructions on how to play the game, so you're kind of just left to figure it out on your own. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm not really sure if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but I don't this know. I get bad. prizes and stuff. <laughs> this reminds me of that time we got stuck in that room playing the scandal. So, board game. Oh no. <laughs> Who's making the money from this game? Is it RuPaul herself? I would imagine it's RuPaul probably. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love giving the Queens a coin like Sony and I, for example, we were talking recently, like we're going to start buying like actually purchasing our favorite Queens merch because we're one, yes. we need some new drag merch and two, why not give the coins directly to the Queens? So right. if there are coins going to the Queens associated with this game, um, sure, I would support it. 
I'm pretty sure none of the queens will ever see a cent from here, and oh, except for not. whatever RuPaul paid them for the likeness, maybe, or maybe, absolutely. maybe they, maybe Ru owns their likeness, so maybe they didn't get paid anything. Who knows? Oh, true. Like because it's in the Drag Race. I just yeah. suggest everyone listen to or watch uh, Bussy Queen. She does all like Wow yes. contract. Yeah. Um, break. We're live. Bye. Woo. Well, uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we had a little Hurricane Eddie come through here. Uh, little little Eddie unplugged everything. <laughs> what a fucking bastard. I swear. He just like... ran through under the table and just unplugged all the cords. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Stoney's like, let's leave him out of the crate. Let's try. He'll be fine. <laughs> yeah girl he just unplugged all later. of the audio equipment and <laughs> fucked up my headphones yeah and he gave us i have to buy new headphones and he gave them the finger as he was running away that little jerk yeah <laughs> that little dog is like fuck you and like ran away <laughs> he's so lucky he's cute yes he really is. so um yeah so we so i don't know go play the app if you want uh, or don't, but I, I'm not giving RuPaul any of my money in the app. It basically is what it comes down to. <laughs> it's a giant grift is basically what I was saying. Yeah. I don't remember what I was saying, but it's basically a cash grab. So have fun. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, how about we get into our honest tea spill of the week and we can get into all of the drag. Yes, Mary. Uh, honest tea. <laughs> Well, hello, and thanks for coming, America and everybody else. Are We're excited to be here and get into some drag. I hope you guys are ready for some glamour, filth, and horror, because, girl, we have quite the Dragula episode to get into this week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we are recording on Halloween, so happy Halloween, uglies. Yes, bitch. Happy Halloween, you ugly bastards. It's so horrible to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Wish we didn't have to see you or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this week on Dragula, there was a Nosferatu beach party. Uh, so basically what happened is um, they had, well, they had a nice little intro video of this uh, beach party sort of thing that lasted a little bit longer than it should have. And then, <laughs> and then we got into the show. All the girls come back and they're like, just chit chatting and like, oh my gosh, who do you think's coming back? And like, two people said something bad about La Zavaleta, and of course they had her hear it, and then it was just annoying. Uh, homegirl like pops off, doesn't she? Like, it was definitely giving me like Elliot vibes, just hiding behind the curtain but not as <laughs> but yeah. like more annoying than that too so oh yeah <laughs> yeah definitely i i just don't get i don't know i think just uh i think let's have a lot is just trying to like produ- self-produce a little bit too much and yeah um yes. i'm not here for it <laughs> there's a lot of that it just i get that people have like their natural auras and personalities but this yeah. feels like it's like a bit put on yeah, and I don't understand why they're all, not all, but, like, a lot of them are being so rude to Sigourney Beaver because I don't feel like she's been rude to anybody, and she is actually has really good drag, so I don't get that either. She's literally done nothing. Oh, they're you're playing like, a game. It's like, uh, yeah, we're all playing a game. What do you think you being a, what do you think Mary Cherry's doing by being a bitch to her? Like, she's trying to psych her out. Yes, this game like these queens are bitchy for that reason. Like they're just trying to psych each other out, and you know whoever has the largest um, parts, whatever parts you have, whoever has the largest, strongest parts, like they're laying it all out there. Yeah, and some of the queens are just out there trying to have an experience. You know, like Sigourney Beaver, and I wish that the rest of the queens would too, because they're all bringing great art to the show. Like it's already a great season, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just very much like, you know, on, on Drag Race, it's like, oh, you know, like most of the queens, they're all like nice or whatever. And, you know, mm-hmm. maybe one queen is like, you know, um, 
nice nasty well well, i mean it's like maybe one (laughs) maybe one queen like solicited like nude pictures and videos like from random people like as a Mm. fake casting agent or something but like Uh uh but on dragula it's like they just get like like 10 of the shittiest people in the entire united states and south korea and (laughs) fly them into be on this television show Oh no! I'm like, how I mean, am I supposed to root, I w- root for any of you? You all I, suck, except for Dolly. I did have higher expectations going into Dragula, just because I thought it was like, okay, well, the casting's going to be better, the judging will be better. Yeah, but it's like more of the same, but like in a, I don't know, like a monster skin. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like like uh, the Boulay brothers are basically like the spooky versions of RuPaul and Michelle. Oh, yeah. They're like, we're not judging your drag, but actually, it sucks. Yeah, <laughs> we're not judging as it your, relates to your, the your, challenge. We're not judging your drag because drag is art, and art is subjective. But our subjectivity sucks. <laughs> <laughs> we are judging you on this drag, though, because it relates to this challenge, bitch. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know, girl. Um, let's get a little bit further into it before we discuss why the judging was horrible. Um, <laughs> we, the For their little uh, fright feet, the girls had to consume a giant bulb of garlic and a Ugh. giant cup of pig's blood. Ugh. Oh, my God. I could, you know, I would rather do the blood. I could not do the garlic like that. Yeah, uh, same. Like that's I'm not a big garlic fan myself, but Uh -uh. I was just like watching all the girls struggle. And then you just like notice that La Zavaleta is just like just going for it. And I'm like, oh, this bitch is not even playing it up. (laughs) She's just like she's just scarfing it down, girl. She's got an iron stomach. I guess. Woof. woof. Props to him because not me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's what happens when you're dead inside already, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah. Legend and poison bitch that's right uh <laughs> so lava zavaleta did win the fright feat and um her prize for winning was to assign the roles and the teams uh because in the main challenge or i guess i should say the floor show uh the queens have to design and create a look based on vampires in their signature style and mm-hmm. then they will go on stage and lip sync to a song called uh, goth surf rama by the vampire beach babes in pairs yes they were in pairs that was an interesting little twist yeah. i will say this challenge the floor show like not good <laughs> yeah, I did not like well, I I like the challenge, but I think the way it was executed was weird because they made such a big emphasis on like you're going to be performing in pairs. And it's like and yeah. not really though. We're all just little they're all just performing at the same time. Right, right. That's all it was. That's why it felt like a little all over for me, but I was getting my life from a few looks in there, but I was like, what is like who do I look at? That's like what, what's happening? Right. That's what I was saying as I was watching. I was like, I don't know how to judge this. Like I don't yeah. know who did good or bad because it was just so chaotic the whole time. Right. There were like a few of the monsters that stuck out like in the performance, but it was like hard to judge them as pairs. Except for um, Mary Cherry and Co- uh, Coco Cane, because they were just stink eyeing each other the whole time. Right. Oh they my just, goodness. They didn't even do the challenge. They were just. Well, Mary there. Cherry didn't do the challenge. I would say that Coco Cane did the challenge. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, Mary. Sh- Mary Cane was just was like. For me. I don't even know what Mary was doing. I don't understand I have, why she like... has such a fucking bad attitude. Like she's been a complete bitch since the first episode and she thinks she's like the hot shit of like new york but girl like my my friend's son did a better stay puffed marshmallow man than you did (laughs) for halloween i mean listen i'm not like like i live in the midwest i'm not like somebody that knows anything about new york but i've seen plenty of new york queens on tv yeah and Mary Cherry might be the least favorite out of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, girl. I mean, she just really needs to, like, calm down. In- like, girl. Including Dahlia Sin. Not- 
It's not like yeah, yeah. I yeah. Oh my Dahlia god, Sin, I'm here for Dahlia. Yeah, we're yeah. Z- Dahlia Sin fan stands now just because of <laughs> Mary Jerry. <laughs> I mean, I wish he would stop because I'm just like, oh, don't do this, sis. Like, I want to like, I want to be on your side, but you're just like all I mean, loud and wrong, just loud and wrong. Two weeks in a row when the floor show, you completely botched it and you're still here. Right. That bubblegum, patent leather <laughs> shit you talking about. I should have gotten points for camp, bitch. Do you know what show you're on? Right. <laughs> they don't care about your camp. You better bring the the horror, you know, the filth and glamour, right. whatever else they judge. You don't see camp <laughs> in the titles of the in the theme song, do you, bitch? Camp? Oh no, girl. Glamour, yes. No. Horror, yes. Filth, yes. I have not seen camp, but Mary. um. We want to be on your side. And it's I don't think you're listening, but we want to be on your side. <laughs> well, it's weird, too, because I listened. I knew who Mary Cherry was because I listened to the Sloppy Seconds podcast with Meatball. Mm. And um, and mm. Mary was a guest on there. And I was like, oh, wow, Mary's funny. It's like so funny and like interesting. And then like, I listened to that episode. It's like Mary's cool. And then I was like, oh, cool. She's going to be on Dragula, like a queen I know, sort of. And then now she's just being such a complete bitch. I'm like, this is not like a flattering thing for you. <laughs> Right, exactly. This is not a good look. Right. But Dahlia does come back in this episode like we thought she might. (laughs) I don't know why they had her skip the first episode. Were they building suspense? I don't know. See, now I need to go back and watch Resurrection because I haven't seen it. So Way to go, ugly. I know. So (laughs) horrible to see you. (laughs) (laughs) I uh, but yeah, I was happy that Dolly came back. I was afraid she would not get her chance, but she is back. The so we get to the floor show. You know, it was a shit show. <laughs> the winner of this week's challenge was Saint, which I thought was a- appropriate. I would have pre- mm-hmm. personally, I would have preferred to have seen Dolly win. I was okay with Saint winning. I would um second the Dolly decision if that were to occur. Yeah, both were really good though. So it's like you know, Saint wins. I can't be too mad at that. But what I can be mad about is the horrible judging. They actually had a pre-judging where they were like, these yes. <laughs> these queen monsters all did horrible. And then they're like, okay, Mary Cherry, you're safe. And I'm like, what? Mary I Cherry know, should have gone for that outfit. home this episode. She should have been in the bottom alone for the look. And yeah, they totally had like a pre-meeting. Like, I know we have guest bitch, but this is our show, I guess. So yeah. what's going to happen tonight before those hoes get out here? Because <laughs> like, they definitely named people. And then like half of the people they were concerned about, they're like, oh, you're safe. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, great. We're on Drag Race judging now. We noticed that. <laughs> Um, so the bottom two were Astrid and Bitter Betty. Um, <laughs> I think that Bitter Betty deserved to be in the bottom. Uh, Sarah Andrews has not really been doing that great this uh, competition. So <laughs> I agree with you on the bottom. I do think like the way Astrid acted mm-hmm. in the bottom two. Like I don't want to like, kill the lead. I don't want to kill the lead here, but like the way she acted, she fucking deserved to go. Like yeah. the bitch was acting crazy, just like, completely nuts. Just like take the note. I had some. I was slightly medicated during this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, medicated. And I was freaked out by the way she was acting. <laughs> like it stressed <laughs> me the fuck out. Like yeah. <laughs> Stony was like, "What is wrong?" <laughs> she. She says she was. It seemed like what she, what Astrid was trying to say was that there was. Um, she was having a panic attack because she was in the bottom. So then she was basically lashing out everybody. And I'm like, uh-huh. okay, like I get that, but like that's not very becoming. That's like not an episode two move, girl. Right. <laughs> so right. save that for like episode six or something. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that was irritating um also in this episode we find out there's some sort of like underground love romance between hoso and astrid oh yeah so that was interesting to each other Mm -hmm. well i think they knew of each other before the show because i sort of like i saw them sort of like uh in a circle with monique shame from season two 
So mm-hmm. I think I think Hoso might actually be Moniki's drag daughter or something. I'm not exactly oh. sure of that. But um but then I also know like Moniki and Astrid have like done shows together and stuff. I don't know. So okay. so it's like I knew who like I knew who those two were. I knew who Mary Cherry was. I know Sarah Andrews, of course. But um mm-hmm. yes. Uh anyways, to continue on uh, we have the extermination challenge between Astrid and Bitter Betty, where they will be submerging their limbs in leech-infested tank of water, and um, that was uh, interesting. Not very scary, though. Not very scary. Still, like, ugh, leeches. Those yeah. are big leeches, too. Yeah, girl. In the end, Astrid was exterminated because she interrupted the Boulay brothers on the runway. <laughs> Yeah, she did. It seemed very pointed, their decision. Mm-hmm. They were <laughs> making an example for sure. But uh, the, the thing that I think the thing that pissed me off the most is when Astrid was having her little moment, <laughs> I guess we'll call it, um, is that Les Avaletto was saying like um, that everyone deserves to be here and that Astrid's being really unprofessional. And I was literally wanted to reach my hands through the, t- the television and strangle La Zavaleta. I was like, you were the worst cunt of a bitch in the last episode and you're calling people unprofessional? I was like, go fuck uh, yourself, La Zavaleta. Don't you just like want to smack them with like a fly swatter? Just like a quick stern sting. Just not my whole hand, just a goddamn fly swatter. Just be quiet. This dumb bitch. I'm like... Come on, girl. Jesus. I I was so annoyed. You're so unprofessional. I was like, what the fuck did you do last week, fucking idiot? I don't know. Well, right. She's, yeah. Ugh. I hate. Yeah. Astro- I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> Zavaletta gets on my nerves. And I know she goes, well, you're still talking about me. And I was like, well, people still talk about <laughs> Donald Trump, too. So. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Of course we're still talking about you. You're ooh. stupid. Like. <laughs> That's what people do when you're stupid. Ooh. Like, yeah, like sh- I'm never gonna follow Zavaletta <laughs> after this competition. There's, I have no. zero interest in following Zavaletta. Um, I never considered it once. <laughs> Sorry, sis. Sorry, sis. But um, but yeah, I was just like this bitch, and and they're like this, and it was made no sense because they were like in the competition there or in their pre-meeting they're like zavaletta like i don't know her look was like kind of okay and then like they get to judging they're like oh my god your look was high fashion and i'm like she's wearing a bathing suit what was that and she was like your acting was so good all she did was just lay there while someone else bit her neck (laughs) she literally while saint bit her neck she literally just laid there and didn't do anything Uh, i don't know i was very stressed out by dragula yeah, we'll see how the rest of the season unfolds for sure. I don't think that she's going to make it very far unless that attitude changes. I don't know. I think somehow she's like the Boulay's favorite or something. I don't know. Ugh, I feel that. like that. I'm just hoping not. Yes, girl. Let's move on because we have ranted far too long <laughs> about Dracula. Um Let's go ahead and talk about some of Canada's drag race. We had a pretty good episode this week, I would say. Mm-hmm. Screech. Canadian queens. I'm still like, I, I I'm still like warming up to the queens, but I feel like we're trying to do something. Bitch, to me, Canada Drag Race season two is like the best season of Drag Race that's airing right now. Yeah, like, to agreed. Me, this is th- like we are watching like gold right now. Yeah, I know. I just don't know who like who my fave is. Like, who's my fave? Eve. <laughs> Eve. I told you. Episode one. I was like, Eve and Beth are my shit. I am enjoying it though. You know, Canada's fun. <laughs> I'm praying for like a Beth return. Like, right. like she just jumps out of garbage somewhere. <laughs> Please let her be the Shangela of Canada. <laughs> my God. Beth is gold. Like I wish she had another chance. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, girl. Maybe we should get her on the pod. I would love to. I love Beth so much. Um, <laughs> all right. So in this week's episode, we have no mini challenge. There is a maxi challenge where all the girls will be overacting in a slasher film called <laughs> Screech. Screech. I love this. Some um, friends of mine got me into watching like Scream Queens recently. I'm in oh, yeah. season one. 
And don't forget too that the the judge was on Handsmaid's Tale. <laughs> oh yeah. You don't want to forget that because that's her only accomplishment. Right. <laughs> and I ha- I haven't watched the show either, so I forget who that was. Was that a Gia? I think that had the part where she yeah. I, I Sorry, don't no watch your that. shitty show. It was one of the white twinks that didn't know the lines. Oh, the whole ep- the whole cast. <laughs> yeah. Great. Oh my god. Um, yeah, but it was it was a really funny episode. I think that um, who was it? Isis that played the the male judge. Is that right? Hold on. Oh me... no, Isis played like the no, forty no. masculine Pre- queen. Oh, Adriana, Brooklyn. the one that yeah, they gave the it, win. Yeah, it, is it Adriana? Honestly, Adriana. I couldn't understand, so I'm calling her I Adriana. Yeah, I, I'm down for that. Sorry, Queen. Respectfully, Adriana. Yeah, she was not good. I hate Brad Goreski. You didn't like her, Brad Goreski? No, I don't like no. him, and. That made me not like her character of him. Oh, no. What's your drama with Brad? I just don't like him. He's just like, I don't know. He thought, I don't know. That's fine. No, I understand. He's trying to he, be like a bubbly version of um, Jeffrey. Yeah, he. Well, Jeffrey. it's just like he thinks he's like so subversive and like femme and cool. And I'm like, you're a skinny white cis man. <laughs> it's like they're trying to basically Uh-oh. like do the opposite of what happened last season where they were like super mean I so now they're like we're gonna be super saying. like nice and stupid yeah I see what you're okay. so okay. adriana was not feeling it now i can say i wasn't really connecting to that performance i was not sure how the judges were going to receive it when i was watching it yeah, I, I did think I was really proud of eve though eve 6000 as nara hater i thought she did amazing She was very, very fun. Like, you definitely remember her in the challenge. And we just knew when she got this role that she was going to do a good job. Here's the thing with Eve. She understood the assignment. And the thing is, this assignment was made for her because, (laughs) like, the lights were on her. She got to perform and be, like, that character that she is. Everyone else was frozen. And, like, to me, she should have... If you're basing it off the challenge, she should have won the challenge. Yeah, yeah because even her runway was um pretty awesome. I thought I her, runway her runway was good. It was yeah. just the part where she was like trying to undo it. It was kind of awkward, but like her look was really good. I really liked it. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, um uh Zavaletta had a, a gag that didn't go right and <laughs> she's still here. <laughs> yeah, that gag right. I think Eve Eve, Eve definitely won Canada. Well, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't know if I'm ready to give her the crown yet. But this episode, yes, I do think she should have won this episode. I was a bit shook they gave it gave it to Boring Goreski. <laughs> I did like their runway. I did like. I did like I did their like runway. Adriana or a- Adriana. Adriana's runway. Adriana. Yes. Um, I, I love I how they explained well. the whole name to us, but we don't know how to explain it um (laughs) but i did love her runway i thought it was it was honestly one of the better looks i've seen on the runway in a long time yes i yeah yeah definitely definitely i don't think really i don't think anybody else really stood out in it i mean i don't think anybody was like bad or anything except for um stephanie prince (laughs) that was pretty (laughs) um uh pretty not fun to watch as Clitney Leskoff. It was awkward. Yeah, she um I mean, I'm not an actress, an actor person myself. So I can't like really judge, but ooh girl, that wasn't But here's my <laughs> thing with Canada mm-hmm. is that I feel like this season we've got a, the runways are way better than season oh, yeah. 1. Yes. Yes. And Stephanie Prince definitely was bringing it on the runway she was yeah. so it kind of makes me sad that she's gone like she does yeah, have good like... looks on the runway mm-hmm. yeah so i don't like that part definitely i i mean she was like this is my moment <laughs> <laughs> i was starting to enjoy their talking heads and they were and then uh whoever was fifi and um whoever was judging it with was it brad I don't know. I blocked that out of my memory, so it must have been Brad. Um, 
I had no idea. Like Brad was on your last nerve. He gets on my nerves so quickly. It just okay. Whew. Um, I feel you. Okay, but um, yeah. Even I when just they think were back judged- to the Rachel Zoe project. Yeah. Whenever I like see him, like to when that bitch Taylor was bullying him, and he was like crying onto the gowns. Good. When he was Rachel Zoe's assistant. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get, bitch. <laughs> oh, Brad. Okay, moving oh, on. Oh, stereotypical, attractive-looking white gays. Oh, poor him. <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, let's see. So yeah, Adriana did win. I don't agree. Um, the bottom two were <laughs> Stephanie Prince and Cynthia Kiss, which I also don't agree that Cynthia Kiss should have been in the bottom. Um. <laughs> It was um, Isis's fault, and Isis didn't even do a good job as the Isis jock. Isis was definitely very like safe. I mean, I no Isis, you sucked, know, like, very safe. Whatever, girl, bye. Isis should have yeah. let Cynthia have her part, <laughs> and then Cynthia could have been the other one. I don't know. I have lots of thoughts. This was frustrating to watch. Also, I feel also, like Drag Cynthia- Race is more frustrating <laughs> than enjoyable at this moment. Uh, also cynthia being like i can't wait to like show you all my drag that me and my like boyfriend made (gasps) and then brooklyn being like tonight on the runway (laughs) she looks like shit (laughs) (laughs) tonight on the runway it looked like your dress got stuck under the wheel of a car being dragged she's like i can't wait to see more of the drag that you created that i hated tonight yeah (laughs) <laughs> that bitch said that I did not enjoy that. Brooklyn did not like it. No, girl. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um yes. So uh after the lip sync, uh they sang a lovely song by Fifi Dobson. I kind of lost track of her. I, I was listening to her in like <gasps> the early two thousands. Oh my gosh. So Fifi Dobson was like my girl for a, a long moment. I was so oh, yeah. fun to see her as a judge. I forgot she existed. It's my problem. <gasps> I oh, still yeah. have like her seeds. Like I love her, but I was like, oh yeah, Fifi Dobson. That's I what know, happened she- when I was watching Drag Yale. I was like, Vanessa Hudgens is still alive. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, Vanessa Hudgens. I just like that day her architectural digest um, yeah. <laughs> home tour was just posted and I watched it and then I saw this bitch dragged out on Dragula. It's like, oh wow, vibe shift. Yeah, I was I I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, she's still a thing that is ex- alive. <laughs> yeah. But um but yeah, no, Fifi Dobson's great. So that was cool. They they got not only did they have her judge the show, but the lip sync was her song. Which mm-hmm. I enjoyed. Yeah, very cool. Um, so that was Canada's Drag Race. Let's go ahead and take a quick little break. Then we'll get into some UK talk. And finally into We're Here. Ooh. Hi, queens. Oh, my gosh. We're on break. Thanks for coming. This is the part of the show where we refill our drinks and you get time to leave us a review. It lets us know how we are doing and lets more Drag Race fans sashay our way. You could also tip us while you're listening to the show like you would tip a root girl at their show. You can Venmo us at TFC Pod or on Cash App to dollar sign TFC Pod to thank us for all the hard work that goes into making a show like this. Oh my gosh, we better get back to the show. I've got my drink and I am ready to untuck, Mary. Let's get back into the Interior Illusions Lounge and record the rest of the podcast. So tell me why you're out here in a bathing suit with no corset and a belt. Shut up, Michelle. Oh, and by the way, you're not my real dad and you never will be. Anyways, back to the show. Well, hey, everyone. Welcome back to our Honest Tea Spill of the Week. We are back, back, back again into uh, to get into these more enjoyable ep- uh, episodes of Ooh, Drag Race. <laughs> shame. <laughs> uh yes girl we are in the uk now and in this episode uh we have a lot going on actually you know um scarlet's still upset about how she was treated last episode by her quote-unquote sisters (laughs) scarlet is so bratty like we just need to let it go queen it's fine like we all have our moments they reacted i do think that they were trying to be there for you so let's get over ourselves and move on i'm kind of annoyed about about it to be honest because i don't know i really liked scarlet at the beginning of the season but i'm like 
girl, everyone had to say a name. So, yeah. like, can we just let it go, please? Like, yeah, we don't need to, like, attack anyone. Like, everyone had to say too. a goddamn name. Yeah, I mean, I would be pissed, too. But you have to see, like, exactly what we're saying. Everybody had to say a name. It sucks it was yours. And if I were there, it's I would the pick, like, if everyone else was piling on Scarlet, I'd been like, Scarlet. Like, because that's how it works, right? Like, once somebody picks the name, all the bitches choose it. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how right. it works. Then you don't have to upset as many people. <laughs> right. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. then you can be at least like, okay, well, this other person said it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, this week's mini challenge, of course, uh, brought to us by the documentary Paris is Burning. The library mm. is open. Oh, yes. There were lots of shady jokes, mostly from Scarlett. <laughs> Scarlett was getting her frustration out. She was just like <laughs> reading the girls down. Yeah, it was it was not funny. It was borderline funny, but mostly mean. She was definitely giving us mean tweets. I was getting, <laughs> yeah. I was getting prissy chihuahua yapping vibes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I do think that Teresa deserved to win, though. That She was really funny. Yes, I enjoyed Teresa the most. It was clever humor, and she definitely has the comedy to her. And, yeah, she was well-deserved. Definitely. Yeah, she was really good. I'm trying to think if there was anyone else that I really enjoyed. I thought Kitty's uh, got claws, uh, like how she yeah. kind of like shaded Rue. RuPaul at the end, yes. too. It was fun. Like, and she was like, RuPaul. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Kitty's so fun. I like I She was like, yes. I would drag you, but I have no badges. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was really funny. Um, so then we get into the maxi challenge, which is, of course, the ma- uh, the Snatch Game. And that's oh. like most years uh, Snatch Game. So you kind of know what the episode's going to be like. But this one was a little bit different <laughs> because this one, RuPaul assigned all the roles to the queens. <laughs> <laughs> this, Yo, what was up with that? This pissed me off so much. I'm like, first of all, RuPaul. Stop trying to make UK drag race US drag race. Like I'm tired of her trying to assign these queens like US like icons. Like I want to see the British icons. I don't know who they are. I don't yeah. know, but I want to see who the UK loves and I want to see yeah. their impressions. It's Rue. And Rue is like trying to be like, oh, be share be Macaulay Culkin. It's like, no, we don't want to see that. Like, let's do that on us. It's like when fucking Kim from real housewives of Atlanta brought her own tacky ass wine to Italy. Right. Like, I don't know. Blair St. Clair could have been Macaulay Culkin. Like (laughs) we don't need to see Scarlet be it. Like let her do something else. That said my notes. Rue was really horny for home alone teas this episode. She was. And you know what happens when you don't take RuPaul's selections? You get eliminated. <laughs> yeah. And like that was so, the message, right? <laughs> look at Shariza May being like she was like, I'm gonna do my own thing. She was trying to do the GG good. I believe in myself. Yeah. And yeah, look yeah what yeah, happened yeah. to her? <laughs> yeah. GG was the last one that was able to do that. Now if you don't if you don't follow RuPaul's wishes, you get fucking eliminated. <laughs> Well, it was so weird that she was doing that because I'm like, let the queens like educate us new viewers. Like we're coming into UK culture and UK drag. Right. Like, let's see how that plays out in Snatch Game. So like I know last episode she'd mentioned I should have gone through your storyboards because, you know, that was some fuckery. Like I'm paraphrasing here, but I feel like maybe that's part of the reason why she was trying to be like, and I'm doing air quotes helpful by doing this, but no, do your homework as a host of the show and maybe like suggest another like UK icon or person that you think the queen may favor personality wise right. or something like don't just come spew well, the American shit onto the UK, you know, land. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very American thing to do to interject yourself into someone else's culture and then proclaim that they should do your culture because it's better. 
than right. theirs. And I'm just like, thanks, Rue, for thanks going on the BBC and basically being like, Americans are assholes. <laughs> Not to mention that the UK was responsible for transporting at least 3 million Africans to the North and South Americas during slave days and to British colonies and other countries. So maybe this is Mama's Roo, Mama Roo's payback or tax for that. OG colonizers. Because that's basically how this episode came off no. to me. <laughs> yeah, but also I was very <laughs> shook when RuPaul knew who Margarita uh, Prakatan was. I was oh, like, "Right, there's no way RuPaul knows who this is." And, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I watched her on uh, what was it? Uh, C uh, Public PBS or whatever." And I was like, know. "What?" <laughs> the only reason that she knew this is because probably like Alexis Mateo like told her in like season three <laughs> to watch this. <laughs> Someone in <laughs> RuPaul definitely had an earpiece on. <laughs> she had her way. You tell me she had the Bluetooth in, and she was like, "Bitch, who is Alexis this? Mateo?" Was like, "She's who an icon." <laughs> like Alexis Mateo <laughs> just translates everything that Teresa does for her in her no. ear. <laughs> oh no! So basically, what uh, Teresa is saying right now is uh, that she uh, is wants to be Margarita Prakatan. And isn't who's Alexis from PBS. isn't a lac- Alexis Latinx and like <laughs> Teresa is like actually Spanish, like Spain? Yeah, yeah. I mean oh, Alexis gosh. is from like Puerto Rico. Don't do that. Don't do that to Ru. <laughs> She's well, had enough issues. Yeah, allegedly yes, there is a Bluetooth with Alexis Mateo, who is not from Spain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I wish Alexis <laughs> Mateo. I had an earpiece with Alexis <laughs> Mateo in it in my ear all the time. Could you imagine? Like that would be the girl, best day. What are you doing? Act a fool, girl. You get everything <laughs> done. You'd curse bitches out. You get the task. Oh done. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. That would be fun. Uh, but I did like Ella Day. I did. I got to learn who Ni- Nigella Lawson was, and I thought she did a really good job. I did too. Like, look at Ella coming out yeah. like midway of the season or close to midway. Like, hi, I'm here. I'm actually. I've got some hidden talents. I remember like when I hated her like two episodes ago. <laughs> you were coming for <laughs> Ella for sure. Yeah, you were so hateful. I know. Now I love her. And everyone like across <laughs> wow. the board. I feel like everyone's like, oh, her drag makes her look older, but. I feel Same. like Ella is one of those queens. Like, hopefully, we get to see more of her growth on the show while she's here. But this yeah. was definitely one of those episodes where she had a great week. She did have a good week. Also, I think Kitty Scott Claus did really well. Yes, um, my queen. F- from my limited research from la- uh, last, was it last season with uh, or uh, season one with um, Cheryl. Uh, Cheryl Cole? Yeah. Uh, and I, I I think after Cheryl did Snatch Game as Gemma Collins, I did a little bit of research to see who, I mean, like I knew who Gemma Collins was like <laughs> vaguely, but like I watched actual videos and stuff like that. <laughs> and so when Kitty did it this year, I was like prepared and like she hit all the memes that I knew. So I was like, yes, like she is killing it. Um, Kitty definitely hit all the Gemma Collins notes. Yes. Like, yeah. Definitely the superior version of Gemma Collins. <laughs> Well, I mean, they were both good. I don't. I know people love to compare. I I love Cheryl Hole, and I'm not going to diminish her work on her season just for the no. sake of Kitty. All the queens did a good job, but I really enjoyed Kitty, and she's on my fantasy league team. So give me the points. <laughs> there you go. Um, so the runway challenge this week was feeling fruity, and the answer is Ooh, yes, I am. Always, everyone was feeling fruity <laughs> except for Scarlet, who went as a vegetable, as lettuce. <laughs> Bitch, <laughs> like I was what legit, like that iceberg. Is <laughs> My name's Iceberg. Like what the fuck was that? <laughs> right, girl. I was like. I was like, that kind of, I was like, what vegetable or what fruit is she supposed to be? It kind of looks like lettuce. And it then was like, definitely a risk. Yeah. And then I, whoever the guest was, the guest judge, she was like, you look like lettuce. And I was like, oh my God, right? <laughs> she was like, why, ah, why damn. do you suck? <laughs> yeah. You look like so, lettuce, bitch. Yeah, that was not so good. And I think that uh, River's outfit was not so good too. Like, Ooh, maybe River we don't need. definitely in my bottom. Maybe we can do fruit salad like without the bowl. 
Well, if you're going to wear a fucking bowl, bitch, if you don't put a design and a bedazzle on that bowl and then plump up those fruits across that tiny, tiny little body of yours, yeah. like, we have to make it big for that runway the problem, so they understand. The problem was it was giving me a tea of coffee without the tea of coffee charisma. Uh-huh. This was like the ice cream cone outfit all over again. Yeah, yes. like tea of coffee would have been like, she would have been like putting her legs out and like kind of yeah. dancing around being like, it's a great, right? <laughs> At, at least Tia can sell it, even if it doesn't look the best. And we're like, okay, Tia, she I buy it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're so right. Um, yes, girl. The The winner of this week is Ella Vade. Congratulations to me and my fantasy team. Yeah, congratulations. And well also, um, Crystal, congratulations for uh, finding your purpose in life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh RuPaul's <laughs> bestowed upon her after having several weeks in either being safe or towards the bottom. RuPaul's <laughs> finally let her know that how great she is. <laughs> Y'all are messy. I am glad that she found her purpose. <laughs> yeah, she found her purpose at 19, so I just feel very far behind. Yeah, I'm 35 and still don't fucking know, bitch. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Maybe Crystal can tell us what our purposes are, too. I'm just making it rain shade rattles. Like, oh my God. <laughs> like, Mercy. basically, it's just going to start and never end. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to sound like, uh, yeah, a lot. Just make it last the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh. Um so um, then the bottom two this episode were Theresa May and River Medway. Um, I think maybe Theresa should not have been in the bottom and it should have been Vanity instead. Yes, yes, I do agree with Agreed. that. I do agree with that. Theresa's look was great. And the stickers are from her personal collection, yes. which I thought was fun because... I feel like that's a question you ask somebody when you're dating. Like, do you collect anything? I mean, and like stickers. Yeah. Okay, cool. I can do stickers. Just don't put them on my wall or anything. I mean, right. personally for me, Ella Vade and Teresa had the best two looks of the night. Yes, I agree. And for Teresa to go home this week is kind of a travesty. Yeah. Yeah. It, w- it was not. And, and they gave him this horrible version of shout by someone named Lulu. Who's Lulu? Ugh. Who the fuck? Is- Sorry. Oh, that like, was respectfully. Who's Lulu? I just Lulu was that old bitch that was sitting on the judging panel. Oh, they did say that was her <laughs> song. Yeah, they did. Say I didn't that. realize that was Lulu until now. I was like, they oh, there's some old that. lady. Someone's grandma snuck onto set. I don't know. <laughs> no, nice catch. We thought it was the like hist- historian from <laughs> Dragula. <laughs> from Dragula showed up on the set again. Yo, she just yeah. looked like she came like from the library. <laughs> like, or like, why is this girl wearing <laughs> jeans and like just a blouse? No, I yeah. thought like, it was totally <laughs> fine. She just like, I'll be right back. I have to stop by the set of Dragula. I'll be right back. We found we found this old lady out in front of the studio that's heard of our show. We invited her to be the guest judge no. on the show. Definitely She's an giving expert like in season. <laughs> this is a real person. We're definitely giving season one or two vibes where it's just like someone showed up to the judging panel. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm canceling her music career just based on this one song I've heard. It was horrible. The press, the re- the reunion tour is off, girl. Blame it on the edit. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I was like, why is she dressing so strange for a woman of her age? Hey, she's she's a free spirit. I thought she looked like fine. All right, Lulu. Whatever. Um, so they they dance. They do the best to the Lulu's horrible music, and and. Neither, I will admit, neither queen was rather interesting. I did kind of zone out during part of this lip sync. <laughs> so when and, they were yeah. both eliminated, I was like, yeah, get, yeah I guess. I, neither one of them could, <laughs> could keep my attention. I mean, they were kind of both boring. I mean, it does. It kind of sucks that Shariza had to take a giant peach off of her head. Like, right. of course she wasn't going to be able to, like, do anything with that on. Yeah. Right. She spent the whole lip sync trying to make sure her wig didn't fall off so she wouldn't be eliminated. And then she got eliminated anyways. <laughs> right. And sadly, like, I wasn't getting any juice from 
the performance either. So the double elimination was justifiable, but just with everything that happened with Victoria going home and I think there's like four more episodes left. So why, why like we only have five queens left? So what's gonna happen? <laughs> Right, like it's like maybe wow. one of them should have gone. You know? I don't know. It didn't make sense. Like, why do the double? Are like, you bringing why someone do the back? double save? My thing was, why do the double save if you're going to do a double elim later? Like, yeah, just right. say like do one. Like, I don't know, because I'm like charity case. Like, probably could have stayed and like been good. Right, yeah, we thought Charity could have like hit a sweet spot right now. Mm-hmm. It it kind of felt like RuPaul was trying to rage quit the season. Yeah, I agree. Ooh, actually, wow, because she was like last episode, no one won. This episode, there was nothing like really great happening. <laughs> I feel, it is kind of true. It's almost like she's just like, we need to end this shit immediately. <laughs> like honestly, we tried. We just need to end this at this point. <laughs> a bitch Let's is do a burnt new cast. out. <laughs> Look at how much Drag Race we're about to be talking about, like before the new year. In addition to what we're already talking about now, like she probably just needs a goddamn vacation. Which right. honestly, Rue, we could use one I too. Mean, think about how you could always retire. That's fine. <laughs> like, like look back at the summer. episode. She's super happy at the beginning of the episode, and then super grumpy at the end. It's almost like she needs a nap in between, like <laughs> yeah, or something. Or maybe someone needs to burp her or something. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, stop being so mean to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, um. Well, let's let's wrap this up. What's the fantasy league looking like, Stony? Um. So this week, my last competitor went out, River Medway. Oh no! Um, so R.I.P. In- Stony's team. <laughs> Bye. I'm in last place with 65 points, Damn. and I will never get any more points this season. Wow! Oh. Unless one of the queens return to the competition. Dun dun dun. Yeah, which isn't happening somehow. <laughs> um, and then in second place, almost 110 points more. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal's in second place with 175 points. Okay. There you go. And then almost five times my point total. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Seth is in first place with 280 points. Damn. Yes. I got a 100 point cushion. Damn. You are way. That's what ahead. you get for not picking the white twinks. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Congrats, Wait, Seth, not for our, picking like... all the white queens and winning. Oh that was my literally gosh. my strategy for this <laughs> one. I was like, I'm going to pick all the white twinks. Not your like fantasy league strategy being like some racial discussion thesis. Weird. I mean, not that I'm... Someone could I don't... use this. I would this love to a have good like paper. Fanny. Yeah, I would love to have Vanity <laughs> on my team, but she was picked. And I was like, all right, team white twink it is. Yeah, hey. Well, no, I'm you're... sorry right. that... Veronica was That's depressed so and that <gasps> and the Victoria basically has knee problems. Injury. Yeah, injury. Damn. Yeah. Arthritis is real. You got screwed for real. Yeah. Yeah. Next you time. tried though. Next time, Queen. Yeah. I think Stoney's gonna make us quit doing fantasy league after he lost so bad. Probs. I'm doing season four because if Victoria comes back, I get her automatically, right? Yes. Yeah. So. Same rules apply. Yeah. You you saw how good that worked out for you th- this time with Veronica. So <laughs> sure, you can have her. All stars <laughs> rules are in effect, which there are <laughs> many. Yes, girl. <laughs> TFC rules are in effect, of which there are very few. <laughs> Rule number one. No. <laughs> Rule number one. We don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> Um, all right, yes. let's go ahead and get into where here because this show is starting to get real long, girl. So this week we were in Bianca Del Rio, Texas. <laughs> yes. It was very exciting. It, it was, looks... uh, I, I guess a border town is, is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, it's on the border. It's like 10 minutes away from Mexico. Yes, and it girl. It looks I have... like very small town vibes. Oh yeah, definitely. I, my, one of my dad's friends is like, lives, um, I got, I don't know what the town's called, but it's in Arizona. It's basically like ten minutes away from the border. But okay. you have like every time he leaves like his house to go anywhere, he basically has to go through border control. Oh, 
it's really wild. I visited him once, and it was an interesting experience. That would be interesting. Yes, girl. All right. So, um, also props to the little girl that called Eureka's look Walmart. Oh my gosh, Bitch. that moment was everything. No, that was, she didn't. That was awesome, but Eureka's response telling her, your look is Dollar Tree, bitch, <laughs> <laughs> was amazing. Eureka just like snapped. She was like, oh, well, your look is Dollar Tree, <laughs> like without missing a beat. Yeah, that was great. That was a really funny little moment. And there. she's sitting down, and this kid is standing up, and they're the same. Like they're looking eye to eye. Look. <laughs> yeah, the elephant queen herself. Yes, girl. Um, first up on our docket here is the mayor of Del Rio, Bruno, who is probably the first out elected official of Texas. I would imagine. You know, I don't. I know would that assume officially. so. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, of Texas at least. Mm-hmm. Of, Texas. of Texas, yeah. And That's a big um deal. He, Yeah, it was a really cool. And and he hopes that his performance will show that COVID will pass. So he's very That's like a, it's, inspirational, it's, uplifting, uplift my people I, vibes. Those are the Texas values there. <laughs> COVID will pass you all. <laughs> it's going to be fine. It's just like the flu. Yeah, it's just like the flu. We'll get over it. I know. And this is before, like, keep in mind, like, this is being filmed, like, probably as vaccines are becoming available or being developed, right? Yeah, I think it was, like, towards the end of the year of 2020. Okay. So right before or, the spring yeah. where we started yeah. to get I don't know. That. It was sometime, like, around then. Yes. So still very yes. much like wear mask, regular testing, stay six feet apart vibes. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But um, I Texas thought that was be cool. Wildin'. Yeah. <laughs> Texas be wild. Yeah. It was cool, though, that the mayor was on the show. Um, I also liked um, there was a point in the show with um, one of the other people, SIL. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was really cool, like how Bruno's like kind of being a mentor because SIL's like kind of like... Mo- was like uh, in the closet to his parents and stuff like that. Yes. And um and I thought that it was cool that you know he had a, a positive role model to talk to. Yeah, it's nice to see an example again like representation especially in a place like Texas. Yes, I said it. Um Texas just seems like a very scary place to me. So having someone <laughs> you can like look up to in that kind of environment, small town and like a very red state, a bleeding state. You know, there's some kind of hope that you can be the person that you want to be and not what, you know, your society, your neighborhood or environment says you should be. Yeah. And I, I love. Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was saying I just love how um, Bruno really like talked about like how they use that like identity against him, like in his mm-hmm. uh, uh, mayor, the mayoral campaign. race. And he yeah. was basically saying like you know, what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about like infrastructure and like all these like policies or do you want to talk about my gayness? And he was just like, basically let's talk about what you want to talk about. But yeah. he was like, most people don't want to talk about that. They want to talk about like things that affect them. Yeah. And I right. thought that was like really like great to hear from him because it's like, they want to like claim like identity politics and all this. And it's like, we're just living our life and we're being this person. And you guys are right. the ones attacking us for being who we are. For minding our business. Like just because I posted a picture of me in a tutu, like At during pride, pride does it, that doesn't define who I am that I was just having a good time. Just like, you were having a good time, like having drinks at a bar somewhere. Yeah, if you want to wear that so, ugly ass jersey four days out of the week because it's football season, bitch. Who cares if I want to wear this tutu and heels and speedo outside of Pride? Like that's my business. Yep. I'm not dragging you, you for that smelly ass jersey you still got on. You know. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yes, girl. But also what I thought was really funny was how in the closet SIL was at the beginning of the episode. And then at the end, he's like, hey, girl. Hey, everybody. Home girl These are my parents. He was like, I'm gay as fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was so cute to watch. Like, and that's, He's like, I look good. That's really how it is because there's stages. Like, it happens when you come that out. fucking fast, though, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, okay, this is it. And then you quickly kind of start to see glimpses of your new self. Your free yeah. self. 
<laughs> right. Because once you come out, like you can be authentically yourself. So, mm-hmm. you know, this is obviously um, something that SAL wanted to do, not only to maybe like explore his sexuality, but also to, um, you know, give out, you know, to, to kind of like become more confident and to like finally come out to his parents. And mm-hmm. I really thought it was really cute the scene when they were in Mexico with Bob and he was with his sister and yeah. like you could really like see how open he became around his sister and how much fun they were happening having like yeah. when he like revealed to her that he was like gay and that he was doing this um it just felt like it felt so genuine and i just thought it was so cute like he's just adorable I and think. when and when she was like, I don't know, am I invited to your show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Bob's like, can you just like ask your ask her officially? <laughs> She's like, can we confirm this now? Like, what's the deal? And I also felt like Bob was having so much fun too, because you could just see like there's an excitement, right? When you come out when you're that young, like gay person, yeah. you have that moment in your life. And you could definitely feel it coming through the TV screen with him. Like, he was just so elated, and it it was so adorable. But also, like, it was so rude of, like, Bob to pick that Megan Thee Stallion song (laughs) with so many damn words. Because then, like, SIL gets up there, and I was like, oh, she doesn't know the words. Uh, I know. Like, Megan is not, like... A casual rapturous, like that's a advanced level flow tree. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> how are you gonna make this poor little gay boy try and rap Megan in the stallion like as good as hey, Megan the stallion? Now sometimes the spirit just jumps out. Like you know, me and Megan can get down on a good day, but most of the time, yeah, not really. It depends on. The I song. mean, I would need more practice. It's, it's hard to live up to her, like live in her sh- like <laughs> up to her standards and in her shoes, you know. <laughs> She's one of a kind. You, there's no other. You can't do it. A for effort. But, yes, That's girl. All um, but then our last person on the show is Joey, who is on a gender journey and um, starts the show identifying with pronouns he and him. But as we find out after, um, Joey is starting the, uh, her actual transition and now uh, is using he, uh, her... <laughs> She, her. She, hit hers. I'm tired. Sorry, everybody. My brain just she, stopped her working. Pronouns. <laughs> yes. We she, got her you, pronouns. Sis. Thank you, everyone. I'll be here all week. Um, so, yes. So, I don't know. I really liked, I liked Joey's confidence a lot. Yes. I know. Like, I just think, like, sometimes, like, where I grew up back home, it was kind of such a bubble in many ways. Like, we didn't really see any of like you know hate or anything visibly like we didn't really experience anything like that so i think about people like joey and especially being in like a small town and it's like oh my gosh like it's tough just being who you are in a place like that where people don't even care to understand most of the time but what i did appreciate was that at least their family were was trying to understand i just think there's little communication barrier they have to learn how to talk about it together yeah like i i love joey's story i think joey is like amazing the way she was amazing yes yes like she was so confident and like did not give a fuck like when she was explaining to like eureka like yeah, people may stare at me, but they're like ugly bitches, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, damn, I like, I wish I had that confidence when I was like a, like that young, like, because I mean, you saw she just does not beat. care. She's like, fuck off everyone. You saw yeah. that face beat. Like, she's like, fuck <laughs> you. I'm cute. She don't play. Yeah. <laughs> well, and also too, I loved how like when, you know, she was uh, initially like in the show, we see that um, she tells her parents that she's, I think, gender non-binary. Yes. And so, um, and I like that, like, when she thought, like, oh, my parents aren't, like, understanding, she, like, firmly stood her ground and was, like, standing up for herself. Yes. But then, like, I like that there was, uh, like, the producer was there to kind of mediate, like, oh, I just think there's not, like, um, the communication's not there because it seems like the mom only speaks Spanish uh-huh. and yeah. and maybe um, Joey speaks mainly English. So, um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It, it was nice, though, to see the the confidence there with Joey. And and, it, and you could tell the parents were trying to understand everything. You know, it's a lot yes. like to, to be like, oh, well, I'm gay. And then, then all of a sudden you're like, well, actually, I'm gender non-binary. And then like two weeks later, you're like, oh, actually, I'm trans. <laughs> well, right, and right. also the father, too, I felt like he seemed so sweet. He, there was such a roller coaster with him. Like, he seemed so sweet. And then... And kind of in the middle of the episode, you're like, wait, is he supportive or not? And then at the end of the episode, he was finally like, I just love you for who you are. And like, I just, I don't know, like the father just seems so like understanding and nice. Like you could tell he was definitely struggling Mm -hmm. with understanding, but he still loved Joey for who Joey was. Right. And like, I don't know. I just thought that was super sweet. This is a good the grandparents, example. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't look like they understood. They yeah, were just like there. Too. They're like, give us the fucking barbecue, bitch. Right. Like, like, yeah, off. we just came here for dinner <laughs> in their own world. But this was also a good example of what it looks like. Like this is what it looks like of family like trying. Like because you, right. we all know what it looks like when they're not trying. This is what we need to see. Um, this does exist in the small town. It's not all scary. It's work anywhere dealing with family and topics on, well, you know, our community and our personal identities. And I feel like this yeah. show, like, I know it's like cliche cause it's like the theme song, but like, this is America. Like this is literally like what the country fucking looks like. This is like what everyone deals with and all their families. Mm-hmm. Right. There's mm-hmm. always like a gay person. Yeah. And we're having a conversation, we're watching on TV, and it is what it is. Like, and that's why we're here. Like, that's this yeah. is why the show is so fucking amazing to me. I really enjoyed this episode a lot too, because we got to see like how um how beautiful the Mexican culture is. Yeah. Since the like all the the um the people we were following were Mexican mm-hmm. so or of Mexican descent. And so I really enjoyed that because like that culture is very vibrant and beautiful and definitely about family. So I, totally. I don't know. I really liked it a lot. Yeah. We always yeah. appreciate learning about areas that we're not from and other people. And it was absolutely a beautiful episode. Definitely. Um, let's go ahead and should we get into some trade before we finish out this episode, girl? Ooh, send it on over. Trade. Mm, trade. Oh, trade. Trade. Choo choo. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, wait. Is it the eggplant or the peach? Let oh, me know. <laughs> I didn't know this would be happening. <laughs> oh. It's trade time. You have an hour. Go prep. <laughs> yes girl so this is my week for trade and uh i have chosen this really hot guy called elliot who is from uh london in england obviously what's their instagram handle it's on the message bitch go into the message <laughs> I'm recording with my phone. I'm on my iPod. I'm looking in our I DMs. Forgot. Go to your messages. I'm in my DMs. Okay. okay I got did. it. Thanks. He's okay. cute. Jamal will fix this and edit. <laughs> I might just leave it. This is funny. Okay. No. I won't do it. Okay. I'm prepared. Okay. So um, so this is Elliot, and I think that he is a cute guy. Uh, Elliot is uh, neurodivergent and also deaf and oh, yeah d- despite all of the all of that um he's also trans and i think he's a great singer i really enjoy his mu- his videos of him singing when he posts those mm-hmm. and the topless pictures are pretty sexy <laughs> and <laughs> they've got a great smile uh, they look like a fun individual Yes, like just a smile that lights up the room. He is really active in promoting awareness for, um, you know, uh, people that are deaf, people that are neurodivergent, trans people, like very much an activist. So I also really like that about him. And um, yeah, he's just a really, really hot guy. So I'll put his <laughs> I'll put his Insta in the description if you guys want to go check out Elliot. He's a pretty hot little twink, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that's about it. TFC is I'm now already following. following him. Did oh, you? <laughs> yes, he's very cute. 
Stony approved already. Ow, ow. Yes, mama. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you all for coming back another week. We are so happy to be here. Even if we don't enjoy the horrible judging, it's probably a matter of time before we get so frustrated we quit the podcast. We'll see. <laughs> Give us a year. <laughs> yeah. The bad judging just makes it so frustrating to like enjoy the show. But yeah. that's our personal struggle. <laughs> that's right. We know that you feel it too. We're just all trying to work through it. So hang in there with us and let's keep having fun. Yes, girl. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode covering all of the same shows that we <laughs> discussed this week. <laughs> yes. So. Go to the website. Leave us a review. Five stars. Let us know what you love about the new layout. Let us know who your faves are, who you're not jiving with and why. Spill all the tea at TFC let us know- Pod on all socials. Let us know if I picked a good trade. Yes, absolutely. And tag them so they listen to the show. Yes, girl. We'll be back next week. But until then, bye. Bye.